I'm Brian Christopher Betts, MD. I'm the Vice Chair of Strategic Initiatives for TCT, or Transplantation and Cellular Therapy, here at Roswell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. I went to medical school at Eastern Virginia Medical School, which is out in Norfolk, Virginia. I grew up a patient, so uh, I was born with a condition where I had to have a lot of surgeries when I was a kid. And in and out of the hospital, gosh, until I was probably like six, seven, and you kind of get used to that environment and, and, and kind of enjoyed the uh, just interacting with the residents, even as a kid. My dad at the time was actually going through medical school, so I, I got to see that process, which is kind of interesting. From a clinical standpoint, I, I do bone marrow transplant cell therapy. So it kind of runs uh, the spectrum of stem cell transplantation, so both bone marrow, peripheral blood stem cells, which are a little different for different indications. And also engineered cell therapies, so CAR T cells, uh, natural killer cells, um, immune effector cells or white blood cells that are used to fight cancer. One of the things that we've done is we kind of turned that idea a little bit. So for, for bone marrow transplant, one of the major complications of it is this thing called graft-versus-host disease. We have these CAR T cells that we made to fight cancer. CAR stands for chimeric antigen receptor. But we have these CAR T cells that will now not only go after the cancer, but it can also uh, prevent graft-versus-host disease, which is kind of a, a new thing. And the reason why we can do this, is there's a protein called CD83, so CD83, and it's expressed on the leukemia stem cell. It's not expressed on normal hematopoietic tissue, which is great, so not normal stem cells. It's not on neutrophils, um, which is important because a lot of the current CARs that are being tested in leukemia have shared antigens, meaning the stuff that they're trying to target is on good cells and they're on bad cells. So you give these cars and they can actually cause marrow suppression or myeloid aplasia, and it can kind of wipe out the marrow. And then you're kind of obligated to get a transplant afterwards. So with the CD83 car, it only goes after the leukemia, but not the healthy stuff, So which is great. So you don't have to worry about these long lasting low blood counts after the procedure. Um, and in addition, you can safely give it post-transplant because it's not going to cause graft versus host disease. So initially, when I started off this whole, you know, trek in medicine, prior to this a different career track altogether, I did, did a morning show. Uh, I was a morning show DJ for a while. I played drums in a punk band. So I, I've, done, I've done a lot of other non-medical stuff. But initially, when I went into medical school, I was actually pretty uh, interested in being a, a surgeon because of my history as a, as a kid. And then as I went through courses like immunology and all that, I got more excited about the immune system. Uh, I remember having talks with my dad during dinner about, hey, I remember when they found T cells and B cells. And I was like, that's good, dad. So I got to learn more about that as a, as a fellow uh, where we were seeing engineered white blood cells being used to fight cancer for the first time, which is pretty exciting. So the thing that got me interested in, in stem cell transplantation and all that, it's seeing real-time application of the immune system fighting cancer, which is, which is pretty neat. And it kind of comes down to us to pick the right targets to spare non-cancerous tissues and avoid toxicities in those ways. There's also some interesting uh, engineering steps you can take to, to make CAR T cells safer too. And that, that all, all that stuff kind of together got me really excited about immunology and using that as a way to, to help cancer patients. The doctor side I, I like a lot because I enjoy being with people, learning about their, their stories. I like helping people out. And it, it's scary being in the hospital. And it's nice when you can connect with your doctor and they're a real person that you can interact with. The science part's a lot of fun too, but it all kind of comes back to, hey, the science part's fun because it's eventually gonna help people out. And I have these little moments sometimes, like you're sitting in the hood in the lab, you're, you're pipetting stuff or you're playing out an experiment and you're thinking, wow, this might actually go somewhere pretty big. And I remember having that same thought when we were working with those CAR T cells I was talking about with targeting CDA3, thinking, hey, this could actually be pretty cool. So I came to Roswell Park um, to, to be part of the, the, the excellent work that's going on in engineered cell therapies. Uh, so recently, uh, Dr. Rainier Brenchens was recruited to, to lead the research that's happening here and then also Dr. Davila too. Not only are they friends, but they're phenomenal researchers and it's, it's uh, really exceptional to be part of all that. And the impact that we can have in Western New York is huge. And not only in Western New York, but the whole entire country or even globally. 
and all that kind of comes down to making Roswell Park a destination for cell therapy. Having partially grown up over in kind of Williamsburg, Virginia area, there's a lot, lot of um, interesting kind of nature things, historical things up here that are, that are fun to check out with the family and all that. Back in Minnesota, Duluth was kind of a trek to get out to, so being this close to Lake Erie and Lake Ontario, pretty neat. Also, the people are really cool. You know, that was one of the first things I noticed just, you know, when I first arrived for interviews here. Helps you feel at home right away, so that, that was nice. 